We've all wondered how we would survive in a life or death situation with nothing but your nose to the wind for company, scraping by with what little resources you can muster before eventually going on to become the hyper-violent equivalent of Robinson Crusoe. That's exactly what the best survival games do, to make you feel like the ruler of your own cultivated kingdom. While they were once in vogue in a big way, much like Battle Royale games are today, the demand for survival games isn't quite what it used to be, but those who love them, really love them. There's a belief that a lot of them follow a similar blueprint, faults and all. Many survival games launch in early access and refuse to leave for the longest time, though none of the following are guilty of that. Number 10, Green Hell. One of the newest games on this list, Green Hell has been compared considerably to The Forest. Though they both have a familiar mood and feel, it's Green Hell that is the more a hardcore experience, and one that will teach you how to play it with some incredibly harsh lessons. Stranded in the unwelcoming Amazon rainforest, you must scrape by however you can, though death is never far away. Whether it's because of a rattlesnake bite or eating a goddamn leaf? Green Hell makes no bones about how unforgiving it is. After launching out of early access, Green Hell can certainly claim that it has one of the most compelling story modes of any survival game. Number 9, Ark Survival Evolved. A game with a UI so hideously abrasive that we question leaving it off this list on principle alone, Ark Survival Evolved follows a similar trend to a lot of survival games, but with a more fantastical twist. Any game where you can mount a frog into battle has to at least be worth trying out though, right? You farm and you build in Ark, a similar story to plenty of its peers. However, it's in its exotic array of animals and gear that Ark comes into its own. By its very nature, Ark is a deeply silly game and Studio Wildcard have done well to embrace that. You can play it by yourself or with others, though expect the customary griefing you've just decided to share a world with other players. Just absolutely do not, and we repeat do not, play it on Switch. Number 8, This War of Mine. Whether it's boots on the ground, rockets in the air, or horses in your face, we always see war games. What we don't see, however, is what happens to the innocents caught in the fallout. This War of Mine shines a light on that in a way that's uncompromising and utterly haunting. Most of the other games on this list are just silly fun by comparison to 11-bit studios' wildly beloved gem. In the midst of a war zone, you must do everything you can to survive, including making plenty of tough decisions. You won't forget the first time you encounter the old couple. Over time, more and more people join you at your safe house, which can change the dynamics dramatically. Some are friendly, some are abrasive, but they're all just trying to survive. If you want to turn the stakes up to 11, it's the Little Ones DLC brings children into the mix and all the stresses that come with them. Number 7. Rimworld. One of the most pioneering games of the last decade, calling Rimworld just a survival game doesn't really do it justice. While there are definitely survival elements to it, this Dwarf Fortress inspired monolith offers much more, the hugely impressive depth allowing you to craft many stories of your own. Things start off pretty straightforward in Rimworld, just help free people to survive. With some patience and plenty of harsh lessons learned, you'll be able to cultivate a world in your own image. Want to turn your civilization into part cyborg pirates in the slave trade? Knock yourself out. With some of the most robust mod support of any game on Steam, expect Rimworld to stick around for years and years to come. Number 6. Don't Starve. Compared to most of these other survival games don't starve is well it's kind of adorable there are no penises zero sad people teabagging your corpse and a welcome lack of jank it's quite frankly refreshing but it's actually one of the oldest entries on this list as clay have been steadily supporting it with tweaks and new dlc ever since it launched you're transported to an island full of things that want to make you dead stop me if this is sounding familiar however don't starve distinguishes itself thanks to a misleadingly wholesome aesthetic and a steep learning curve whether alone or with friends, Don't Starve is a simple joy and probably one of the best entry points if you want to find out what the genre is all about. Number 5, Darkwood. You want a more hardcore version of Don't Starve? A deeply disturbing survival game that's far more terrifying than its lo-fi visuals may suggest? Then you should absolutely check out Darkwood, one of the most unsettling and constantly tense games of its ilk, thanks to some superb audio design. Ugh, the dog. The damn dog. The goal is simple. Survive. While that is the point of all the best survival games we've compiled here, Darkwood doesn't ask you to go up against teenagers with a penchant for a teabagon. Instead, you must roam a forest by day and hunker down for the night and all the things that go bump in it. Darkwood features a top-down perspective, which is somehow even more panic-inducing, and features absolutely zero hand-holding throughout. Best of luck, we also listed it as one of the best horror games ever made for a good reason. Number 4, Rust. If you are at all sensitive, don't play Rust. If you are easily frustrated, don't play Rust. If you are at all a good person, don't play Rust. Face Punch's notoriously toxic post-apocalyptic survival game is built around griefing other players just as much as it is about building itself. 
It's about as unwelcoming to new players as these games can get. However, if you're lucky enough to find other players who don't want to immediately kill you, despite you only having a rock, I mean, what's your problem? Rust becomes a whole lot of fun. Clans are part of the long-term gameplay of Rust, so you'll want to find some allies as soon as you can, though you can always join solo servers instead. Over time, it's morphed into more of a PvP game than a survival one, but you still need to survive, which is easier said than done. Also, there are penises everywhere! Number 3, Subnautica. Compared to most of the survival games on this list, Subnautica is positively vibrant. Gone are the muted colours and destitution, replaced by a life under the sea. If you want a break from the grime of the post-apocalypse, Subnautica is the perfect substitute. That's not to say that it doesn't pose a challenge. It is a survival game after all. After your spaceship crash lands on an alien planet, you have to eke out an existence by balancing your basic human needs, the allure of exploration, and a need to make your way home. The deeper you go in the sea in Subnautica, the deeper the nightmares become. Lovecraft will be proud of the creations lurking beneath. Number 2, The Long Dark. The Long Dark's big bad isn't a huge monster, nor is it other players. It's the elements, and the occasional bear. Compared to other fare, The Long Dark may be slightly on the slow side for some, though there's nothing quite as thrilling as dragging your starving ass across the Canadian wilderness in search of pork and beans. The Long Dark can be experienced in one of two ways, as an out-and-out -out survival simulator, or as a narrative-based adventure. The former is what it's made its name upon, but don't sleep on Wintermute. It carries all of the same punishing mechanics while also being wrapped up in a compelling story that's still unfolding. It's a small thing in the grand scheme of things, the Long Dark's art style may also be a huge selling point. And number one, The Forest. No game has ever made the monotony of chopping down trees feel so fun. The thud of your axe and the consequent falling of the tree means that although you may be doing a lot of it to try to survive against freakish enemies after your plane crashes, you will never really tire of it. An early access graduate that fully released in a relatively short amount of time, the forest has lots going for it that its contemporaries simply don't. You must survive, but you also have to find your captive son in a story that's actually worth investing your time into. The forest also has a sheen to it that the likes of Conan and Ark could only dream of, as well as very limited opportunities for griefing. This is the game you want to check out if you just want to do everything that the survival genre is all about. A sequel, Sons of the Forest, is due sometime soon, so you may as well check out the forest if you haven't yet. So, that was our list. Agree? Disagree? Be sure to let us know either way down below and be sure to also like and subscribe, it helps us out a ton. Thanks for watching.